John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. John Anik and Kenny Florian. I f***ing love them. I can't get enough of them. Let's hear that Boston next. Big jab there from Duffy and Fred Fear is hurt now. Oh, down goes Duffy O'Connor. Fred Fear does it again. Rock em, sock em, robots here. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe there are a couple of absolutely self-involved bull artists. Here are your hosts, John Anik and Kenny Florian. Episode 425 of the Anakin Florian Podcast presented by DraftKings. We are just days out from UFC 291, Poirier versus Gaethje 2. Not going to be as silly today. Still wearing my glasses. I got some eye thing going on. I don't know if it's a scratch. We're going to find out soon. We're going to see an ophthalmologist before we head to Salt Lake City, Utah. But gosh, if I didn't have like buckets of respect for Michael Bisping prior, I haven't been able to put in a contact lens for a week, you know. Trying to get DraftKings a promo video. It's like, dude, you look like shit. You know, look like shit. Nah. Great to have you with us. If you have found the show on the DraftKings network, power to you. If you have found us on the DraftKings YouTube channel, thank you for that as well. I know for some, it has been a little bit of a navigation. If you like the videos and subscribe to the channel, specifically liking our show, I'm told that that will help populate things. Clips of our show can still be accessed on the Anakin Florian Podcast YouTube channel, where, of course, remember the show with uh, Bilal Muhammad and Jason Anik still resides. A lot to get to today, of course, with UFC 291 coming up this weekend. As is a major event in the boxing world, as two giants of the sport face off this Saturday, Errol Spence Jr. v. Terrence Crawford for the welterweight world title. And DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered on the action. New customers strike now and get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just $5. As of this moment, Crawford about a minus 155 favorite. Spence Jr. comes back plus 120. Fight pretty close on paper, as is Poirier Gaethje and many others this weekend at UFC 291. So don't miss out on all the fights everybody's talking about. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code AFPOD. New customers can get $150 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 this Saturday, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code AFPOD. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in West Virginia. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races, all games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash boxing terms. All right. So much to get to with a really good individual. Let us get to Big Gun Brian Petrie and the main event challenge. It's the main event challenge. And it. The main event challenge. The John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. Sometimes I wonder if you guys check my map. Great to see you, Brian Petrie. Hey, hey. At Brian Petrie MMA, host That's of the it. MMA Takes podcast. That's it. Great father, husband of the year, potentially, or not nominated <laughs> this year. Not nominated? Uh, I don't, you know, it's an honor just to be nominated, but uh, I don't know if I got that, that distinction this year. Yeah. We'll see, though. We'll see. I always like to just jab my wife with that in front of the kids. Be like, uh, yeah. hey, honey, did you hear the news? Uh, not nominated, incidentally, for uh, for Mother of the Year in 2023. Pretty good effort, but you're teaching full-time, honey. And she's like, what? I thought you were just fucking around. Now you're like bringing my job into it? All right. I got to focus. I got to focus. So a lot to get to with you, buddy. Uh, yeah. I hope you had a good weekend. And yeah. uh, it's interesting, man. You know, I think for a lot of people who didn't unload on Tommy Aspinall, they feel like it was a missed opportunity. I know you and Ken Flo went hunting with extra units, but... Uh, <laughs> People are just really abuzz about this heavyweight contender, and it's it's easy to see why. I feel like Cito Gan got similar hype. Maybe mm-hmm. Aspinall has more because of the nation from which he comes. Um, but what do you have for us on Tom Aspinall um, making a big statement after a year away? Yeah, this is kind of what I wanted from him. This is what he needed, a first-round finish. This is what I, I, I thought he would do and he could do, and you can tell. I mean, he added the size, 258, but looking thick, looking like a big dude. You know, he's not small in there. And I got to admit, I, I went heavy on Molly McCann, and that that hurt. 
got hurt bad. So, you know, there's a term in poker and I guess in gambling where you're a little on tilt. So I, I was upset. I had buddies over McCann loss, you know, blew, yeah. blew up my parlay oh. four units down on the, the show. And I go, you know what? I unloaded the DraftKings balance on Tommy Aspinall. I didn't have the balls to do a first round KO, but I did do it by a double chance at KO submission because the guy can do either or. So I'm happy I did that. I made my night a little bit better, still a little down. Um, but yeah, the guys, the sky's the limit for this guy. I, 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 I the, the call out was okay. I really want to hear a Pavlovich name in there. You know what I mean? Because I think the Russian bear is a guy. A lot of people want to get in there with. I want to yeah. hear that name, but other than that, he's not really a call out type of guy, but I thought he did a good job with the crowd uh, and phenomenal performance. Yeah. Oh, it is interesting. Yeah. That, that Sergey Pavlovich name uh, really resonates with the fan base right now. Yeah. So, uh, let us update the standings, and then we'll get into everything going on this weekend. We'll see if potentially any boxing uh, action for either of you boys with the oh, uh, the welterweight tilt this weekend. Um, Team Petrie led it by seventeen hundred and ten American dollars going into London. Leeds not that anymore. No. And uh, gosh, man, <laughs> like if I was allowed to bet on MMA, right? And mm -hmm. I was down on the night, and I like Tom Aspinall, right? Mm -hmm. It's good that DraftKings you have like a balance, right? Yeah, because sometimes you get these local bookies, man. Right, sure, no sure. balance. You know, your balance yeah. like 10k, mm -hmm. and then it's like, yeah, hey, give me 10k <laughs> on Aspinall. Um, so you gave out eight picks last week and some yeah. propositions on the back end of that. Power to you, productive mm -hmm. five and three underdog hit on Paul Craig. Couple units as we mentioned on Tom Aspinall, but you did reference the real stinger. Four units yeah. on Molly McCann. No respect for the armbar, evidently of Julius. No. Yulia Stoli, Renko. That's a $1,400 wager the way we play. Uh, yeah. So it's minus 930 for the week on okay. Petrie, despite right. a 5 and 3 ledger. So minus 2705 on the year. Here comes yeah. Team Florian, 5 and 2 on the week. Hey. Three unit play on Nathaniel Wood. Huge swing fight there. Um, plus 250 on the week for Ken Flo. Now minus 3235, but far more importantly than that red figure. Back within $530. And you got to love it. Because it's not like down the stretch we come, but we're getting close to August 1st. And uh, you come. guys are, are neck and neck separated by $530. All right. Before we get into UFC 291, Poirier v. Gaethje 2. Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, Brian Petrie. Yes. We know you got hands. So do these boys. Mm -hmm. Will you have any action on this boxing match that you would like to include in the main event challenge? Absolutely. I am. I'm a huge fan of both these guys, but more so Bud Crawford. What he does in the boxing ring is unbelievable. He's one of the few boxers that when I'm down in my, my garage acting like I'm a goddamn superhero, I put up the uh, laptop and I watch this guy box. He's one of the few boxers that come out. Uh, he can do both ways. He's, he's primarily a southpaw, but he starts orthodox. Um, unbelievable technical uh boxing and he's he's a savage in there he's mean he's confident uh and errol spence has been through a lot he had the car wreck he had the torn retina um and he's he's got the coach of the year with him he's got a great gym but i just think terrence is gonna be too much this is a fight terrence has won it for a while people have been avoiding him he's been wanting a big fight we all know how boxing is everyone's got a promoter and nothing gets put together this guy put together and i really think terrence is gonna shine here i like bud crawford uh to cover that number for sure i'm gonna Definitely be placing some wages on that while uh, while I'm watching. All right, so Terrence Crawford, one unit minus 155 for our purposes. Can I uh, yes. can I drop yes, that down? Uh, Ken down Flo, Kenny, any lean or anything for the record on the boxing this weekend? Yeah, I, I, I used to watch Errol Spence a lot as a fellow Southpaw. Um, I used to watch him coming up and to see what he's done. I think he's a fantastic fighter, uh, very technical, um, can pose some problems, but Terrence Crawford's just so damn smart. I mean, you don't get undefeated with that kind of record for that long um, unless you're just a really intelligent fighter. And I think his ability to adapt, his ability to throw a lot of different things, his counter punching is phenomenal. So I think it's going to be really difficult to beat Crawford. So, yeah, I'll, I'm in line with that. Um, I, I like Crawford here as well. By the way, Ken Flo's jab, BP, out of that southpaw stance. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that lead right, that Nasty. fucking lead right. Just in your Nasty. face, right? Just go sit on the canvas, right? And then I'm going to come <laughs> choke you out with that gentle art, right? Come fucking choke you out. Oh, by the way, at Anik Florian Pot, I want to know, skill for skill in their prime, best Massachusetts fighter in UFC history. You want to hear my five? Give me your five. five all right. Calvin Cater. Okay. Number four. Tisha mm -hmm. Torres, born Fall River, oh, Massachusetts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number three, 
Uh, I'm forgetting one of my top five. Rob Font. Oh, Joe Lozon is number three. Joey Lowe's. Rob Font, number two. And <laughs> former three-time UFC world title challenger, Kenny Florian, is number one. Because yeah. in Kenny's prime, uh, oh, nobody man. better out of Massachusetts. So I love it. Uh, it's, it's a too great fun. list. Thank you, Jeff. Kenny, do you have any of those other guys ahead of yourself? No, you don't have to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know, seriously, at Anna Florian Pod. How do you compare the resumes? I mean, don't do this to Kenny. <laughs> but how do no at Kenny Flory? How do you guys compare the resumes, right? Of these guys, and who am I forgetting? Right, Jorge Rivera. Some of these guys. I mean, Gabriel Gonzaga claims Massachusetts. Yeah, but Kenny Flory and mm-hmm. Joe Lozon, right? Like a lot of you going to put Joe Lozon number one, and that's fine. We got a head 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 win there, so we're good. Um, we got a head head win there in a main event against Joe Lozon, so feel pretty good. So president of Team Flory and BP is like you're <laughs> out of your fucking mind. But who do you like? Florian Lozon, Cater Font Torres. Um, who do you like out of Massachusetts? All right. Woo. If Longo was here, he'd be like, what drug are you on? And it's like, not. Absolutely not. All right, should we get into uh, UFC What's 291? Doing, Brad, should we do that? Cracking right. me up. Cracking me All up right. today. Damn. Salt Lake City, Utah. It is now the Delta Center again. I don't know if any of the Carl Malone and John Stockton fans care, but now it is the Delta Center again. And we'll start with a heavyweight prelim, rare prelim appearance for the Black Beast. Oft headliner for the UFC. Derek Lewis, plus 135, the dog here. Bry against Pays Out, mm-hmm. Marcos Ogerio de Lima, minus 155. Pays Out going for a fifth win in his last six. Your thoughts? You know, in MMA, we always talk about C level Kane. That's like a joke. TRT Vitor. This is the John in at Glasses show. This guy's on fire oh, with the glasses looking like his daughter, I think. That's the first thing I thought. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, so I love it. But I, I, this heavyweight fight, you know, it confuses me a little bit. Derek Lewis on the prelims, you don't see that often. But when you look at what he's done in the past couple of fights, you you kind of understand why. He's still an exciting guy. He's powerful. He's getting up there in age. But Delim is a guy I never get right. Derek Lewis is a guy I never get right. I just, I literally should just fade myself and not pick this fight because we have that opportunity, but I'm not going to do that. Listen, De Lima has added a little bit of cardio to his game, which I like. He used to just be completely gas. You get him on his back. He's toast. He's grappling a little bit. He's winning decisions and he's got bricks for hands. And so does Derek Lewis, but Derek Lewis I don't know if he has a chin problem. He definitely has a problem with getting hit and trying to recover. That is an issue with him. It's been his issue in his career. Um, you know, so I'm going to go Delima here. I wanted to take the shot on the dog on Derek Lewis, but I don't like what I've seen. So give me Delima. I have no idea how this fight will get finished, but I, I, I like Delima in this fight. Certainly, if you're betting on one guy to dig deep, right? With mm-hmm. a championship hunger, maybe it's a lean towards pays out there, Kenny. He just turned 38. Lewis just a few months older. He'll be 39 in February. Derek Lewis, 17 and 9 in the UFC, but he has lost three straight in four or five. Kenny, which way are you going here? Yeah, um, you know, you you look at the contrast here. Delima has a lot of momentum going his way. Uh, Derek Lewis does not. And you wonder, you know, is he working on his ground game at this stage of the game? Is he throwing up arm bars from his guard? Is he is he trying to get back? I don't think so. You know, and, and I think, you know, Brian's wondering about how this fight's going to finish. If it gets finished, I think DeLima or Jorge DeLima should take him to the ground, submit mm-hmm. him. We know that could yeah. happen. Um, so that's where he needs to take this fight. He could strike as well, but why would you do that against someone as dangerous as Derek Lewis? And, you know, traditionally, if you go a little bit further back, um, I have paid dearly uh, picking uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima fights and Derek Lewis. So I agree mm-hmm. with you there, BP, that they are difficult. But I think at this stage of the game, I don't know if it is. Maybe I'm jinxing myself, but I think this is Marcos Rogerio de Lima's fight to lose here. Uh, I, I think he could trade with him for a little bit, but take him down, um, get the sub or TKO. Um, so I, I'm with the Brazilian fighter here. Imagine getting hit, kicked in the head by Pezao. I mean, my no. goodness gracious. No. All right. No, thank Featured prelim live on ESPN and ABC. Gabriel Bonfim minus 300. Trevin Giles plus 250. Bonfim out of Brasilia. 14-0, 25 years of age. Huge statement, Brian. His UFC debut mm-hmm. in Brazil right against Munir Lezez. That was in January. But Giles, far more UFC tested party here. 16-4 and overall. 7-4 and in the UFC. And Giles, I was uh, somewhat surprised to read today as I was starting to prep, going for three straight wins here. Yeah. Does so as a pretty big underdog, Brian Petrie. Who do you like? Yeah, I was nervous when Giles went to 170 because, I mean, he's not a big 85, but he's kind of lean, right? So I'm like, where's this weight going to come from? But he's 2-0. 
competition's been there, yeah, whatever. But I mean, he's still two and zero, and he's and he's winning fights. Bonfrim, are we gonna get another heavy Bonfrim brother that lets us down? Ishmael fell short. I mean, listen, he ran into Benoit Saint Denis, who kicked his fucking arm off. So we got it right. But Gabriel Bonfrim is this kid's a study. Look good against Munar Lazes. And I like him a lot. Do I like him at minus 300? Nah, I mean, I'm, I can't play that myself. Good parlay piece. I do think he's a better fighter everywhere than Giles. Um, it, the cardio is going to be a big factor here because Giles can push a pace. Now at 170, he can kind of mix everything up with the grappling. The striking is a long, uh, rangy guy, but I think Bone Freem is just explosive, exciting, and hopefully he's got a little more tricks on the ground than his brother did because that was tough. So I'm not willing to pay minus 300, but I am going to take Bone Freem because I do think he's a good fighter. All right, Bonfim, minus 300 for Brian Petrie on the record. And yeah, Kenny, for Trevin Giles, it was actually an encounter with Kamaru Usman that uh, led to him dropping down from 85 to 70. He's like, all right, if this Nigerian nightmare in front of me can make 70, then uh, I think I can too. And he has, and he's done well. Your thoughts on him here against uh, the three to one favorite, Gabriel Bonfim. Yeah, J- Giles has some decent wins, man. You know, I, I think uh, there are a lot of high hopes for him early on in his career as well. Um, I-, I think he's dangerous. You know, I-, I-, I think he's an interesting underdog. But against someone like Bonfim at this stage of the game, I, I-, I don't know. I-, I would lean the way of Gabriel Bonfim. I think he's just a little bit better uh, on the feet, a little bit better on the on the ground uh, as well. So uh, I-, I like the Brazilian fighter here as well. All right, now we get to the pay-per-view opener at welterweight, and a lot of these lines are uh, pretty intriguing. Kevin Mm -hmm. Holland, minus 150. Michael Chiesa, plus 130. I'm going to give you a little background on this. Holland coming in off a huge knockout of Santiago Ponzinibbio. Many calling that performance in Miami at UFC 278 in April the best of his career. Mm -hmm. About four times in 2022. It'll be just his second appearance of this calendar year. And that activity, Bry juxtaposed uh, against a near two-year layoff for the former Ultimate Fighter Live winner, Michael Chiesa. Fought three times in 2021, but we have not seen him since. Your thoughts on him in a huge return spot against Kevin Hall. This was a really tough fight for me to pick. Probably the hardest on the card because if, if Michael Chiesa was still active... Uh, like fighting, you know, a regular schedule. This is a guy who has the uh, pedigree to beat Kevin Holland. Grapple, take him down, submit him. Holland struggles. But Holland's been active, and I like that he's slowing down because that means, hopefully, he's sitting there getting in work in, trying to stop his takedown offense. We all know he was embarrassed by the Tamaya fight. He's almost retired. He has since come back, and hopefully he's working on it. He does have good jiu-jitsu, tries to work off his back a little bit, but his takedown offense and stand-up game needs to get better, especially when you're fighting Kiesa. Kiesa, you know, I said this when I broke down his fight with, with Brady. I almost feel like he's one foot in, one foot out, kind of. You know, He's, he's run, doing the desk stuff. He's doing great, breaking down fights. I believe he has a podcast with Paul Felder. So it feels like he's planning his career outside of his career now. But again, I think he's he's good to be motivated for this fight because I think he matches up really well with Kevin Holland. I'm worried about Kevin, Kevin Holland just throwing a fucking blistering knee right to the middle of Kiesa, dropping him because Kiesa, small liability on the feet. But I like I like Michael Kiesa as the underdog here. I think his grappling is going to get him down. I don't know if he's going to submit Kevin Holland, but I think he can smother him for three rounds, get a classic Kiesa fight done. Uh, so give me the dog. All right, Michael Chiesa right now can be had on DraftKings Sportsbook at plus 130. So the last win, Kenny, for Chiesa came against Neil Magny, January 2021 on Fight Island. Both of these guys, somewhat interestingly, 11-6 and six in the UFC. Timely matchup in Salt Lake City. Kevin Hall in the favorite, Kenny, or, uh, or Michael Chiesa the dog? Yeah, this is a very interesting fight, very difficult fight to pick for me. I think Kiesa matches up very well against Holland here. Uh, Holland's going to have a huge advantage when it comes to striking. I think. I think his ability to use his length. You know, not that Kiesa is small at all. Uh, I think Kiesa is a very big uh, welterweight as well. But um, I think for Kevin Holland, he's got to use those long range weapons to really try to catch Kiesa as he comes in. Kiesa tends to get most of his takedowns from the clinch, from that over-under position. He gets those body locks, um, gets those sag body throws, and then puts you on the ground, is able to control you. I don't think his submission game is going to be good enough to submit someone like uh, Holland. Um, I think he can get good position, work work uh, to a potential TKO, but I think more than anything else, the, the biggest threat with Chiesa is winning round after round of you know smothering Kevin Holland. So 
for Kevin, uh, I, I think um, he's got to be able to catch him. I, I, I think I think Kevin uh, as a favorite here. I, I don't see a whole lot of value. I, I I'm I'm with BP on this one. I was hoping mm-hmm. that maybe he'd take Holland. So unfortunately, I, I'm kind of going the same way here with Kiesa, just because I see the value as an underdog for his ability to hit those takedowns. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, Kevin Holland, if he's able to get a win and get a finish over something like Kiesa, I think it would be extremely impressive. So I wonder if the audience enjoys when you guys agree because it makes mm-hmm. them feel convicted in these wagers because yeah. I certainly like when you guys disagree. Kenny, we'll have you lead us off here <laughs> since you fought for the belt in this division. Uh, 155 pounds, Bobby Green minus 350. Tony Ferguson plus 270. 22nd UFC appearance for the 36-year-old Bobby Green. Winless in his last three. That includes, of course, a loss to the current champion, Islam Akashev. So you got Ferguson plus 270, Ken Flo. Closed in that range against Michael Chandler. He is now 39. It is also his 22nd UFC fight, but his last win came all the way back at UFC 238. That was against Donald Cerrone 2019, and here we are, you know, however, 50-plus pay-per-views later. What do you have for us? Bobby Green prohibitively favored in my mind against Tony Ferguson. This is another tough one. I, I think that when you're looking at this fight, the, the big question for me is where are these guys at? Where are these guys at mentally? How are they approaching the game at this stage of their career? Are they showing up for a paycheck? Are they training the same way? Are they learning new skills? Um, I, I think if, if, I would answer as far as like who's gaining more skills. I think Tony Ferguson is probably, you know, trying to learn more new skills. He's, he's mixing things up with different camps now, uh, which is good to see. Uh, for Bobby Green, he's always going to take the same approach. And I don't know if he is really that great at adjusting in between fights and during a fight. Meaning, you know, is he bringing anything new to the table? And, and I don't think he is. And at a favorite at minus 350, I see a lot of value with Tony Ferguson, actually. And, you know, I know Tony Ferguson is, you know, he, he's, he's been through the ringer, right? He has been there and, and seen that. And uh, I think that for Tony Ferguson, he may surprise us at this stage of the game. So I like Tony Ferguson. I like his experience. Um, you know, he doesn't want to take too many punches from Bobby Green. Bobby Green can still put anybody's lights out, but I think Tony Ferguson's experience, his ability to mix things up, I think he can get it done. So, um, yeah, give me Tony Ferguson a plus 270, dude. Nicely done. And I would sort of piggyback upon that and suggest that he's been more competitive than than the record yeah. shows, Bri. I don't mm-hmm. know. I saw Petrie Smirk, which seems like maybe he was <laughs> looking at that plus 270 number as well. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Ferguson at this stage of his career? And let me just add real quick, Brian, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and he's right about the training camp and yeah. the appetite for improvement still. And mm-hmm. the approach, uh, supposedly this was one of his best training camps in years. Kids are sharp. This, this, this Kenny Florian guy, he might have a career and this guy's a fucking sharp. He's over there picking value. Look at this guy. I love it. No, the values on Tony Ferguson, hundred percent. I mean, my plus two seventy is crazy. Bobby Green's looked good his last time out, but he's 0 three. I know those losses are, are adding up, but two of the three are by finish. You know, the guy's arrogant, he's cocky and everything like that, but he's also getting a little long in the tooth. He's not the youngest guy in the world. Tony Ferguson though, I haven't seen his weird symbols that he tweets out or Instagrams. That means I think he's working, right? He has a camp. He's working. We always wondered, who was Tony Ferguson coaches? We got guys in the corner yelling to throw sand. Like, what is, what is going on here? It looks like he's working now. So Kenny's right. Plus 270 is the value. However, this is a competition, right? I was going to go that way because I thought Kenny was going Bobby King Green. Give me King Green. I think he's going to be a little too fast. Um, if they create scrambles on the ground – I mean, Tony's Darst and, and and a lot of his front chokes are great, but I just feel like he's missed a step on the ground. I mean, I can't believe Gate, uh, Nate, Nate's great, but Nate got him with the guillotine, and uh, I figured Tony would just never tap anything, but he tapped. So I think he's missing a step on the ground, so it's going to be playing on the feet. I like Bobby Green's king speed here. So give me Bobby. I'll disagree with Kenny a little bit. And this is a competition, and one of our loyal listeners points out that whoever loses the bet and has to crack a beer bottle over their head live on the show, if you put a rock in the bottle beforehand yeah. and let it go around a little bit, it sure. makes the bottle sort of easier to break. So I, I got to tell you, Johnny, I, I had buddies over yesterday, and I don't drink, and they, they, we had some beer bottles in the house. We, we don't drink. 
And I literally thought, cause I got called out a little bit in the DMs. Like you've never done that. Blah, blah, blah. You're 12 years old, but blah, blah, blah. you know, people think I look so young. I almost had my wife film it and just get went in the garage and got it done with, but boom, <laughs> let's do it. Right. But I'm like, no, because if I lose, let's save it. Let's build it up for the whole year. But yeah, so I just wanted to bring that up. Well, let's put a rock in that bottle right now. No, <laughs> it's actually going to be Kenny and Cody paying off. That's that. right. We're winning this fucking thing. Yeah. All right. Let us get to the next fight at welterweight was elevated to the featured bout slot here on pay-per-view with the removal of Paolo Costa and Ikram Alaskarov. So Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Bry, minus mm-hmm. 180, Michel Pareda plus 155. Pareda certainly on the right side of the youth equation. I got to think that mm-hmm. factors in somewhere here. He's already accrued, though, a ton of experience at 29 years of age, and he's won five in a row. Mm-hmm. That should be this huge feat in the UFC. I'm not sure why this winning streak of Pareda's hasn't been celebrated more, maybe because the last four have been by decision, I guess limiting some of the shine, Bri, but uh, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on Pareda here in the high, highest profile fight of his career? I love this fight. We got karate versus Capoeira, uh, which is which is just, I mean, you don't see that often in the UFC. Michelle you Pereira, just don't. I, you don't. I saw. I I know. I knew him coming into the UFC. I saw a highlight tape. I'm like, how does this guy make 170? He's enormous. I mean, he truly is. Stephen Thompson looked amazing as Kevin Holland. His striking is some of the best you'll ever see. Right? It's unique. It's different. It, the timing is great. The speed is still there for being almost 40 years old or 40 years old. And Pereira is very aggressive and, and you know, he's flashy and explosive, but he doesn't have a ton of knockout power. And I feel like he leaves himself open. He's proven to have a good chin, but I feel like you leave yourself open. Steven Thompson's going to find it. I really do. I think even at this stage of his career, he's that potent. He's that good. However, not last fight, but two fights before that, Pereira landed at two takedowns each in his, 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 against his opponent. So he does, he is mixing things up. Stephen Wilmore Thompson, that's the big knock on him is he, he does get taken down. He works well to his feet, but he does get taken down. So that pauses me a little bit, but not enough to throw three units on Stephen Thompson. I'm going karate over Capoeira. So give me uh, Stephen Thompson, baby. All right, three, three units, unis on yes. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson at minus 180 on DraftKings Sportsbook. Kenny. Wonderboy, born 1983. By the way, you heard him go, Capoeira, right? Because he always goes hot. So we, did have, we didn't have a pronunciation of the week because there just yeah. wasn't a great one. I almost went Udosh Medic, but there mm-hmm. was Priscilla Kashweda. But yeah. we've had her on the pronunciation of the week segment before. But gosh, I mean, what I wouldn't pay to hear you say Priscilla Kashweda. Can you give it to me once? I mean, do I have to pay for that? <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. Priscilla Kashweda. I mean, yeah. that's what I do. I go Kashweda. I don't I do, do it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I got it twice. I just, I was going to pay it again once. It. I you got to sing it for me. There it is. <laughs> All right, Kenny. Wonderboy Thompson, born 1983. So younger than us, but he'll be 41 in February. Fought just right. once last year. That said, wicked productive outing against Kevin Holland. Still number seven in the world, still within striking distance. And obviously the champion is a striker right now in Leon Edwards. Your thoughts on Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, the favorite here against Michelle Pereira. Uh, I'm still thinking about the Betch Cohea sound bite. That's, I think, the best thing that we have on the podcast, by the way. Uh, sorry, Ray Longo. Um, yeah, listen, um, I, I, this is a very interesting fight. And when the fight was announced, I, I kind of got a weird feeling in my stomach because I like Wonder Boy. I like Wonder Boy a lot, and I admire him a lot as a mixed martial artist, as a martial artist. I think he could get a lot of things done on the feet, man. But P- Pereira is one of those guys that I think that um, he's going to feed off of this karate style rhythm. Um, he's a capoeira guy, but really, you know, when I look at fighters, I look at the way that they move, the rhythm, the range that they keep. And I think that he likes the same range as well. And him being as tall and as athletic as he is, I think he's got a really good shot at winning this fight. Wow. Um, this is a competition, right? And and I mm-hmm. think Wonder Boy, we got to look at the high level experience that he has, uh, but we also have to look at his age. And 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 if we're being honest, I do see a little bit of a decline in his skills, right? And I think that as a guy who relies heavily on his speed and his mobility as a fighter, that's typically one of the first things that leaves you as you get older. Is it bad? Um, is he no longer elite? No, absolutely not. But against someone like Pereira, who is still very sharp in his movement, um, 
I think you have to watch out. Now, um, against more of a traditional style of, let's say, like a Muay Thai style or a boxing style, I actually think they match up better against someone like Pereira. I, against someone like Thompson, I like this for Pereira. And it, and it pains me. It pains me to go against Stephen Thompson. I, I rarely do that. Um, but here, because of the value, because this is a competition, because I ha- I can't ignore that weird feeling in my stomach, I have to go with Pereira here. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think I just think there's an interesting value here. So I'm going with uh, another Brazilian fighter. What the heck's going on? <laughs> Kenny, I absolutely love it. And you know what, everybody? Mm-hmm. You can go message Wonderboy and let them know that... Uh... No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm totally uh, I kidding. Love I love Wonderboy. I know. <laughs> Sorry. I should have just let that go. <laughs> hey, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, grab a sip of water because I'm coming right back at you for the co-main no. event. There we go. Light heavyweight title eliminator. I'm, ga- I'm glad they remained... They kept the stakes on this one. Three rounds. Former champ, Jan Bohovic, minus 125. Alex Pereira. Minus 105. Ken Flo, I don't have to tell you that Pineda is the former middleweight champion moving up here to 205, and he draws the number three ranked contender and former champion, Jan Bohovic, who wins the co-main event, and how do they get it done? Great, great pronunciation. I've been anglicizing the Pineda. But, um, you know, I, I think Bohovic, you know, if, he, if he's smart, if he's capable, if he's able – he needs to take this fight to the ground. I, I think he can get some things done on the feet as well. I think it will take him a little while, or bo- it could potentially take both fighters a little while to break each other down. They're both very, very durable. But I think Pereira is going to do very well at 205 pounds. Um, you know, this fight is very tough, but I think this is the right weight class for him. I think he's going to be more willing to uh, throw more volume, I think. Not that he's a high volume striker necessarily, but I think he's going to have more energy and more strength to be able to do that at 205 pounds. I don't think we ever saw Pereira at 100% at 185 pounds. I just think he was that damn good that he was still beating guys left and right at 185 pounds. Um, now, he'll, he'll, he'll lose a little bit of that size advantage at 205 pounds, right? But as far as letting his skill shine, I think we're going to see just that. So, um, Bohovic should take this to the ground. Is he going to be successful? He might. Um, but I think Pereira is going to surprise some people in his ability to survive there and get back to his feet. I think what, what scares me a little bit in this one is Bohovic taking the back. Uh, that's where Pereira, I think, is going to be most vulnerable here because he he does do that at times. He will give his back and show his back. And we saw Izzy, who is not the best ground guy in the world, take advantage of that. So that's where I'm most nervous. But I mm-hmm. think there's some good value or good enough value here in Pereira where um, he catches Bohovic and finishes the job uh, by KO or TKO. So, uh Kenny, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep this. Uh, Kenny being biased here with the Brazilian fighters, that's where I'm gonna hear in the comments. So uh, Pereira, <laughs> Pereira back to back for Team Florian and Alex yeah. Pereira right now, slightly to the underdog at minus 105. Kenny, how old do you think Jan Bohovic is? I don't know. Uh, I, I I guess he's probably younger than I think, uh, or is that incorrect? Uh, is he like uh, mid 30, 35? You say 35. Cody says 38. He's a man. He's 40. He'll be yeah. 41. Damn. In okay. I was way up. I was way up. I was thinking you were going to surprise me because he looks older, but he's actually younger. Okay. Yeah. 40. yeah 41 in February. Pineda 36. Mm-hmm. Ryan Petrie, much yeah. younger than both of these individuals. Who do you have? Actually, you're older than Pineda. No. Yeah. Petrie yeah is. I'll be 37 Brian. on August 4th. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Brian, mm-hmm. talk to me. Jan Bohovic, Alex Pineda, on which side do you fall and how convicted are you? Love this fight. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, Kenny said at best, Kenny broke that down beautifully. I can't really top what he said, obviously, but uh, Blahovich and Izzy fight, which I've watched several times. A lot of people are comparing that because they're like, oh, Pereira's coming up to 85. Look what happened to Izzy. No, 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 no. Let's, let's not make it something clear here. Pereira is fucking huge. Izzy uh-huh. is, is a big guy himself, but he's thin, right? So Pereira is a big dude, and he's training with Glover Tixera and a bunch of killers in Connecticut. They've been in Salt Lake for like two weeks now. Um, grappling, obviously, is the biggest concern. Like Kenny said, I'm worried about – I'm not worried about the takedowns. I'm worried about their transitions to the feet if 
Bull Holmridge can take the back or some kind of choke, but he because he is a black belt and he does have some rear naked choke victories on his record. He's also a big strong guy, but he's forty. He's a man. He's forty. And Pereira, God, this guy's impressive, man. I've I'm an Izzy guy, and I went back and looked at all the footage of Pereira kickboxing, and he is nasty. That left hook is beautiful. Just let he all he needs to do use his not listen to me like all he needs to do. I didn't mean to say that, but what he needs to do is. Do not put himself on the cage because that's where Blahovich can smother him, take him down, get him like uh, get him on the ground. Like Blahovich has a good double in in the middle of the cage, but circle off, use your footwork, kind of like we did with Strickland because we thought Strickland was going to wrestle, and just keep peppering him, land your shots. Blahovich has got a great chin; he's been knocked out before, but he does have a great chin. Uh, I like Pereira big here. I almost went all five. I almost dumped five units on him. Ooh, Already did a three. Going two. Going to a Pereira. Minus 105. That's a juicy number. Need to get the stock up. Need to get the money up. Um, I love. I like this fight, Pereira. I think he's going to be fighting for the title next at 205. Nicely done, boys. Alex Pedeta right now, minus 105. We'll see where it closes before UFC 291. All right, that brings us to the main event, and we'll go right back to Brian Petrie on this. Lightweight eliminator for the BMF title. Dustin Poirier minus 135. Justin Gaethje plus 115. Historically, Bry, first fight back mm-hmm. in 2018. Main event on Fox went to Poirier by round four TKO. It was actually just the third UFC fight for Justin Gaethje. Mm-hmm. Both men six and two since. Numbers and names eerily mm-hmm. similar. Now for a second time with raised stakes, it shall be done. Poirier, Gaethje, who do you like? So believe it or not, for the commenters and everyone on Instagram, I don't have a crystal ball. I am wrong quite often, right? Uh, Molly McCann, perfect example. I am wrong. I'm a human being, people, but I've never been more wrong on my own podcast years ago when these first fought. I was all in on Justin Gaethje. I said, Justin Gaethje's going to do this. He's going to do that because I hadn't seen the dog yet of Poirier. We saw him fight Chan Sung Jung, and he lost in that war Lost to Connor. He had some good wins, but we hadn't seen the dog yet. That was the Poirier. That the Gaethje fight was when we saw Poirier become Poirier, in my opinion. This is why he's fighting the BMF because he got his leg kicked the fuck off. We saw the bruising. He was like, I couldn't take another kick. Found that left hand, found what he did, and won the fight. And now you see him in fights where he gets rocked or he gets wobbled, and he gets, he's okay because he's been through it. And he's got that dog in him. I think this is the toughest fight for Gaethje in the division. I think Poirier's boxing is too clean, too crisp. I've watched all of Gaethje's fights since their fight, and he's still he's a little calm, right? You know, the new Gaethje with the Tony fight, he wasn't as wild, but he's still throwing some loopy shots. Throws that right hand pretty loopy. His head movement's getting a little better, but Poirier's just so pinpoint southpaw. Um, the the the, lay, the inside leg kick's gonna be there for uh, for for Justin, but I feel like. Poirier is just going to counter with a straight left every time, make him pay for it. Uh, I like that the number's low on Poirier as well. This is going to be a must bet for me. I like Dustin Poirier to get the BMF title this weekend, boys. All right, well done, Brian Petrie. Gaethje really, I think, showed you, Kenny, that he is still at that elite level. And just where he's at mentally, physically, emotionally with that win over Rafael Fazi, majority decision, UFC 286 back in March. Both of these guys, 34 years of age. Poirier's got 21 UFC wins. That includes a submission of Michael Chandler in his last appearance, UFC 281, last November. First fight was absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I mean, the number that jumped off the page for me statistically, 50 of 57 in the leg kick column for Justin Gaethje in that first fight, and yet still not enough to get it done. Poirier, otherworldly toughness. Ken Flo, fascinating main event. Um, we're, We're excited for Saturday night. We need to know who you have, Dustin Poirier. Or Justin Gaethje in Act Two. Yeah, you know, um, I don't love the BMF title, but man, this is an amazing fight. I absolutely love this fight. These are, um, you know, two guys that you, you know exactly what they're going to do every time they step into the octagon. Um, and for Poirier, yeah, I, I I slightly disagree with BP on this. You know, it, does he have the sharpest boxing or sharpest striking in the world? I don't think so. I, I think that he leads with his toughness many times, and that um, it gets him very far. Is he a bad striker? No, he's a great. He's a very good striker. Um, is he the sharpest one? I don't think so. I think that. You know, if we were to take uh, Fizzy, for example, you just mentioned him, um, and we compared striking. Um, you know, who's more dangerous from a speed perspective, from a weapons perspective? If we were looking at them singularly, uh, Fazeev's way more dangerous thing than Poirier is on the feet. In my opinion, if I'm looking at it, doesn't mean he's going to win, but he's more dangerous. And I think he's more of a threat there. So 
if I'm looking at who's improved the most, right? Because Gaethje had his opportunities to close that door in that fight against Poirier. Let's not get it twisted. Yes, he won, but man, did he open that. And also, his conditioning was not the same. His composure was not the same. That I, I think if we're looking at those two guys, Poirier has made very good improvements as well, but I think Gaethje has made much better bigger gains in my opinion um and i'm also biased towards gaethje i love seeing the guy fight i love seeing poirier fight as well and i think poirier's best bet if he wants to go out there and just finish the job put gaethje on his back he's going to be like a fish out of water submit him poirier can go out there and do that um could he win on the feet as well potentially why because poirier has a heart that is insane He's got a chin that is very durable. He's very durable as well. How long can that last? And we keep saying that about both of these guys. I don't know. And that's why this fight is so great. Um, but I am going to lean towards Gaethje. Uh, admittedly, I am very biased here um, towards Gaethje and his style. But I do genuinely feel he's made huge improvements since then. I think he kind of handed that fight over to Poirier in that first one. I think he can't do that here. Um, and, uh, I think gaethje has got to be able to get in and get out and be able to do that four or five rounds. I think he can do that now before, if this fight were to take place a few years ago, I would say Poirier all freaking day, but today I like Gaethje. Wow. How Love about it, it folks? Love Justin it. Gaethje plus one fifteen, and a pretty compelling argument there from, uh, from Kenny Florian. All right. If you want more from Brian Petrie, why would you not? At Brian Petrie MMA. Appreciate it, man. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Obviously, it's a busy stretch for the UFC. And, uh, oh, you got another prelim pick for us, don't you? No, I want to yield my prelim prelim times. I do not have one. But I want to shout out Evan Longoria, who's obviously a fan of the show. Oh. John, you're, you're boys with him. He hooked me up with tickets today. Me and the family. My little girls got to go to the first Red game. He gave me a sign bat. I got to meet him. Try to get me on the field with some Reds officials being kind of a that's dick. Awesome. Uh, but no, that, that I mean, that's first class individual right there. So shout out to Evan Longoria. I really appreciate that, man. That was that was that's so awesome. amazing. And thank yeah. you for uh, for getting in there and getting that yeah. out there. And uh, to the Reds official, I don't even know what you what need. What are you to doing? Do. What's he doing? Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, all right, buddy. Enjoy UFC 291. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, boys. See ya. Hey. All right, there he is, Brian Petrie, big gun, Brian Petrie with us for the main event challenge. And we are going to go right back to the guest line right now. I'm very excited to talk to this man. He's an undefeated mixed martial arts prospect, ultimate fighter veteran, UFC hopeful, Shamrock FC featherweight champion, and a whole lot more than that. A man doing a lot of good outside of mixed martial arts as well. Dustin Lampros is with us front and center. Dustin, good to see you today, especially on a Sunday, my man. How are you, brother? I'm great. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. It's our, it's our absolute pleasure. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. So um, are you native to South Florida? One of my relatives was over today, and they asked me if you were a local Floridian, and I said I probably should have fucking looked that up first. But <laughs> you're not native to South Florida, are you? No, I've, I've just been down there since November of 14. But I'm from uh, southern Illinois, where I'm actually okay. at right now. Okay. All right, so um, I want to start with a lot of the fight stuff. So your professional record is 8-0. Some of you may recognize him, obviously, Team Volkanovski back on the Ultimate Fighter. So your last pro fight, though, was July 9th of 2022. It was a finish, right? You did win a belt. So uh, what can you tell us in terms of your next fight and what your approach is as far as the UFC versus a fight that is not that big show next? Yeah, I've just been in, like, a weird kind of spot since my last fight. Uh, kind of injured my hand pretty bad in my last fight and my knee. And uh, I just kind of was, like, in this position where I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to heal up, rest. I'm 8 no, seven finishes. I know I'm on the radar for the UFC. And I kind of wanted to stay healthy and stay ready for a short notice opportunity. And then just throughout this past year, uh, you know, training down at Kill Cliff, our training is very – you know, it's very hard, you know, to say the least. And, um, you know, I live there full time, so I don't go there just for camps. So I, mean, I get banged up a lot, you know, and I have to like, it's, it's that balance, you know, for us fighters trying to like, you know, not do it too much. But unfortunately, right. the past year I've been getting banged up, my hand, my shoulder, my knee. So I wasn't sure I was going to take another, a couple more fights. And then I was like, all right, you know, 
they know who I am. You know, the, the guy who was talking for me, uh, the Dean Thomas, Dean Thomas was helping me out and he was talking to Shelby and, you know, they're like, you know, we're right where he wants them now, just waiting for an opportunity. So I had to weigh the, the risk reward option. Do I take another fight in the regional scene, take a chance, you know, my style, I come out there for the knockout, you know, I'm swinging, I'm usually breaking my hand, breaking something, you know, cause I'm how I fight. I'm like, do I go out there just to get another win? And then for them just to put me in the same boat, just to keep waiting or do I just stay in the gym and sharpen my skills without having a fight come up so I can really focus on learning instead of just preparing for the fight. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where I've been at. You know, I, I was going to fight in May um, regionally again, but I decided, you know what, um, I'm just going to hopefully wait because I'm seeing a bunch of short notice opportunities and it didn't happen yet. But, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm going to try to get through the summer, hopefully stay ready for this next month or two, and hopefully they give me a call. Um, I just signed with my first manager ever. And, uh, oh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, yeah, I fi finally signed with someone. I was like, all right, you know, I've done this all on my own completely up to this point. And, uh, I think I've done good for myself, you know, getting Nate, no, and, uh, you know, getting on the top show and everything, but, uh, yeah, I signed with a manager and he's in talks with him and hopefully, uh, he can get me in there here in the next couple of months. And if not, then I'm going to have to fight again. I can't keep waiting. You know, I'm, I'll take one more regionally and then just see what they say from there. Uh, Dustin, I'm really curious as to what you're doing outside uh, of training in mixed martial arts. You know, um, I, I think that it, it's extremely admirable what, what you're doing. Can, can you explain to, to our audience exactly what, what you're doing? Yeah. So a buddy of mine, uh, Ryan Montgomery, actually happy birthday to Ryan. It's his birthday today. He, uh, yeah, he's a, he's, um, an ethical hacker in cybersecurity owner and the, he's just a very brilliant guy and uh he's a big heart and for years he's been behind the scenes um being an info guy basically for these big uh child um predator groups these guys that go out there and they catch these child predators from online and this is in a spot where you know i'm just training and i don't have much going on outside of fighting and you know it's pretty much fighting has really just been my life so I had this other time and I've always been feeling like, you know, there's gotta be something more for me, for me, you know, I'm more than just being scrappy, you know, Dustin, like there's, there's more to me. And it was just almost like a meant to be thing. We're sitting there talking and he was like, yeah, I do that. I do this behind the scenes. I catch these child predators and I help these groups out. He goes, I've always wanted to do it in person, but I've never had anybody that's serious enough. And I'm like, well, tell me more. And he showed me within like five seconds, how bad it was. And I was like, you know, jaw drop. And I kind of known I've had two people in my, my life that were, uh, victims of it. Um, one of my childhood best friends, um, was a, a very uh, unfortunate victim. And my mom, when she was younger, was a, was a victim of it, um, from things she would tell me. So as soon as he showed me, I was like, man, I got fired up and I'm like, I'll go out there and, you know, let's go do it. Let's like, I'll, I'll be the one to confront these guys. And. He was like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. So we started this uh, project called 561 PC, 561 is uh, the area, you know, where we live in uh, South Florida. And we started, we did it for like two and a half months where we never felt like never, we always filmed it. We never posted it anywhere. Never like we just were turned into the cops. And then it was one of the cops that actually was like, you know, you guys should be exposing these guys, you know? And we're like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll start. Cause I didn't know how people would react like a fighter, you know, I don't know. I didn't, we didn't know we didn't know anything about it, honestly, like how people would react or whatever. And it wasn't for other people, but so we started posting it, like posting it and it just kind of took off and we got crazy amount of support. We started, uh, you know, putting out there all the, all the predators that we were catching and all the videos of us, of me confronting them, you know, Ryan was behind the camera. I was the one that was confronting them, but yeah, that's what, that's what we started. It was five, six, one PC. And, uh, we're out there catching online child predators that are coming to meet up with children. That's amazing, man. Um, you know, politically, uh, I guess we're in a, we're in an interesting spot right now. Uh, and obviously we have the movie sound of freedom. Um, you know, there, there's, there's been a lot of stuff back and forth, you know, what are your thoughts on that current state right now? Because it seems like, uh, I don't know. It, it seems a little strange, I guess. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And it's a touchy subject. Like there's so many people, you know, like, uh, you know, God bless John, you know, wanting to speak on it. You know, he even, you know, reshared it, not afraid of what, you know, people, cause a lot of people are just kind of like, 
it's like a weird thing, but I, I don't know why. Like, I mean, it's, it's a real problem out there that's happening. You know, I mean, look at our friend, you know, my really good friend, Walt Harris, look at his, you know, his daughter. Like, I mean, it's right in front of you. We don't think it's, it goes under the radar, you know, so much goes under the radar. And if it doesn't happen to us or someone we know, we don't think about it. Right. Like, it's kind of like, Oh yeah, that, that's sad. We see a little story, but then it starts happening to people we know, or, you know, people that, you know, are involved or whatever are victims. And then it, then we start to care. And I think, uh, you know, like sound of freedom is really exposing, you know, the, the dirty secrets of the world. And I mean, it's, it's just, it's the biggest issue out there right now. And it just goes so under the radar and it's because there's so many important people that are a part of the problem, you know? And that's why a lot of people are so scared to talk about it. And I mean, I think Disney was the owners of, um, sound of freedom and they didn't want to, they weren't going to put it out there and they got it. So I think it was a Tim Boward or whoever bought it from them. Cause they're like, well, you know, we'll produce it. We'll put it out there. We're not afraid. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a very, very touchy subject and it's, it's, it's weird for, like you said, it's awkward. It's like a, it's like a weird thing. But, uh, once I got exposed to it, I was like, wow, this is, and then, after all the videos kind of took off and took wind, I got so many messages. I mean, I, to this day, I still probably have 500 requests of messages from people saying, sharing their stories, sharing testimonies, telling me how much they appreciate what I do. And that a lot of it's heartbreaking. I don't even know what to say back to half the people, you know, it's, it's truly mind blowing. Dustin Lampros with us here on the Anakin Florian podcast. You can find him more, Find out more on Instagram at Scrappy135 MMA. And I just can't commend you enough, right? As a father in the 561 right now to come across your content, you can imagine the overwhelming feeling that came across me. And if you do want to help 561 PC, and uh, I really do want to get involved and I commend Ryan. Uh, you know, I've been struggling with how to describe Ryan. I think ethical hacker, right? Obviously, but he was the driving engine and parlayed with you. You guys are this tremendous force. I do have to wonder though, uh, Certainly, I would pick you against almost anybody at a Walmart uh, in aisle nine, head to head, right? Um, But I would imagine your mother and others have expressed some sort of concern about your physical well-being walking into some of these situations. Oh, of course. You know, tons of people. uh, That's that's half the messages I get. You know, please be careful. You know, it's super dangerous. And, uh, you know, my father, you know, he, he... he's supportive. Like, he's like, you know, I'm glad you're doing that. He's like, it's just scary. You know, like he's afraid. I'm like, well, anything worth anything's scary. You know, um, I, I say this like, and I mean it, you know, if that's how, if that's the way God has planned for me to go out, you know, then so be it. You know, I, I know that I'm doing a good thing. And one thing more than being a fighter that really makes me feel like I have a purpose is helping somebody. I don't know what it is, um, when I'm making someone happy or helping someone or I'm making some kind of impact this past year is really what I realized like makes, fulfills me, makes me happier than ever stepping in front of the cage, winning a fight in front of people. I mean, that stuff's great, but, uh, I realized there's so much more of a purpose to my life than just fighting. And that's what I've made my idol the past, you know, since I moved down to Florida in 2014, uh, you know, I, I thought in my head, I got to be so dedicated to fighting. If I want to make it, you know, I was behind because I had no background. It was just a dream, you know, and, and I got so wrapped up in it that I realized, I didn't realize, you know, how much more there is to life. And uh, starting this project, man, was very uh, eye-opening for me. And uh, I couldn't be happier with the decision of doing it. And, you know, everybody wants me to be careful. And, um, but, you know, someone, if I can, if I can make an impact on, you know, one child's life, right. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's worth it, you know? Yeah, no, it, it's really unbelievable. And yeah, if, if you can save one and I Blanchard, uh, then it's worth all of it. And, uh, 100%, again, 100%. Just, you know, uh, and it's interesting too, because as somebody who used to teach special needs kids and I used to, uh, work as a job coach and a vocational coordinator, right? Like if they paid those people, you know, what they pay, you know, people to wear like television makeup, I'd still be doing that. And I do think Kenny and I, you know, as sports TV announcers at times, you know, certainly we all feel, well, hopefully most of us feel that philanthropic pull, but sometimes I feel like my work, uh, you know, my, or I guess my hours could be better served doing something that really helps people more than just 
an outlet like recreation, which is sports television. And I love that you're obviously a professional athlete and devoting your energy to this. I mean, how big can we take this thing, right? So I don't have to tell you, there was a show hosted by Chris Hansen to catch a predator. I think it was on from like 04 to 2008. Um, you know, like, am I going to, am I going to leave the UFC and uh, we're going to just go at this thing full throttle you and me? Like, what are we doing? I know. And that's, that's the thing. Like what we did, our, the catches we did, we did in a couple of months time. So mind you, we haven't done a catch. So when this took, when we did a podcast with Mickey Powell and a 38 second clip of it went viral, like crazy. And it brought it. I had this guy named Sean Ryan brought out uh, my buddy Ryan Montgomery and me. And I had, my plane actually got canceled, so I didn't end up making it onto the podcast. But he went and finally got the voice he deserved. And it from there, it was, it was huge. It was, everybody reached out. And now, um, as of last week, Ryan, my partner, actually is step, he isn't going to be doing it with me anymore, which we're, everything's great between us. But he's his skills are so insane. Like his hacking, like his, what he can do, that he's working for some of the biggest organizations now that are literally getting kids out of shipping uh, containers. Like doing things like that, and I'm all for it. Like he's using his skill set on a wider range, and he's still there for me if I ever have questions. And um, now I know, uh, you know, my my foot's in the in the world of you know the predator catching, and I know people now, so it's still going to carry on. Um, but yeah, that's the thing everyone asked me, you know, where, where does this go? I had no intentions. My intentions were just to do it. And then I realized, obviously, my face on camera being a pro fighter makes everybody interested. Everybody, you know, it's, it take, it took off more than all the other predator catchers. I've been doing it for years. And uh, I don't know where it could go. I mean, I, if, you know, it's not something, obviously, I have a lot of people that, that reach out and they go, hey, I, I'm from, you know, California. I would love to start that here. How do we get, how do we do that? And it's, I don't, I don't really encourage somebody to go out and do it and then get hurt, you know? And then I'd be the reason, like you guys are saying, like, you know, it's scary. Well, yeah, I don't want to recommend like, yeah, start your own catching group. And then a week later here, you know, they got injured because, you know, of the situation and they didn't handle it correctly. I, I don't know. I don't know if we start, you know, something to where we go around, you know, Ryan and I were talking, maybe getting an RV and traveling and setting up some like tours to where we can go and speak to kids or, or go and uh, maybe set up some kind of groups like that in the future. Um, it's so new. It just, it took wind so, so fast on like four or five videos. That was it. And that's all we've posted. And we haven't posted anything in a while or like haven't done any catches because we've been trying to like get everything behind the scenes together. Um, I don't know. I would love to, I would love to do that. I mean, that would be awesome. We could start a TV show or start something to work, but if it's actually making a difference, you know, um, cause this was nothing that we ever, we started to do to make money. You know, we have never taken a donation. Um, Ryan, you know, is financially stable or uh, in a, financially in a situation where he could afford to pay decoys and do pay for all the things that it costs to make the catches happen. Um, and now that I'm stepping back, I do have a, a sponsor, someone who I met with that was like, Hey, I love what you're doing. I love to support it. You know, you wear this shirt during your patches. I'll supply you with whatever you need. And like something like that, that's great. You know, I'm for it. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know though exactly from here where it goes. I mean, yeah. I've had people reach out and say, Hey, TV network, that'd be great. But who knows? Maybe a, a predator beat down, you know, like a spin off from bully beat down. There you um, go. Make them, there that you would go. that would be cool, you know. I know that would, but um, yeah, man. I, I don't know where it goes. I I just know that I want to continue to do it and um, you know, help make an impact. And uh, I really believe that it is. Well, if there's ever anything that I can do, certainly locally down here, I'm not much of a threat on aisle nine, but I can get better. Like Argus Integrated Defense can help me better, and. Uh, Obviously, the show financially or otherwise, the Anakin Employment Podcast, not that I should speak for Kenny, but we would certainly be happy to get involved and help. Real quick, I just want to say, so in terms of your fighting career, if this UFC opportunity mm. comes around, this has the potential to really dominate your UFC fight week, if and when that arrives. Uh, have you thought about that at all? Yeah, you know, I get asked that a lot. Like, I actually get asked a lot at, at a Hill Club and a lot of people be like, what do you like doing more catching predators or fighting? You know? And I'm like, I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. Honestly, I'm at this point where if you want to know the truth, 
it was after like my last fight or my seventh pro, my seventh pro fight, I, I felt so empty and I was undefeated and 20 something years old in South Florida. Like, you know, I've, I've been blessed with sponsors, being able to, you know, I, I worked my butt off to, to gain people to want to support me. And this, I have everything. I felt so empty, man. I just felt so like, I don't know, there's gotta be more, you know? And that's when I, you know, I turned to God and I, I realized, you know, like I've been, I had so much of my purpose was off. Like so much of the reasons I wanted to be a fighter, the reasons I want to do this was not for the right reasons, you know? And then when I started, you know, praying on it and saying, Hey, like, I, I just want to do, I, I just want to have a real purpose. I want to make an impact. You know, that's when this came about, like out of nowhere, you know? And I, I don't know, like if, if this became bigger and I was making more of an impact and I, I was happy, you know, still doing it and everything. Yeah. I mean, it could take over, um, and fighting could be, you know, just the cherry on top or the plus. Um, I, I never imagined ever making cherry or, uh, MMA, a, a backup thing or like a side hobby, you know, cause it's been my life and my devote, you know, I've been devoted to it for the past eight, nine years, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's a hard, it's hard to say, you know, I guess we'll see where it goes. You know, just kind of have to, you know, wait for it to happen. Well, I got to say, man, you got the greatest side hustle in the world. I know it's not bringing in income, but you're changing yeah. lives man, and uh, making yeah. just a major impact and profoundly on even people whose lives you're not impacting directly, just people raising awareness, people like me and Kenny and others. So uh, if you want more from the man, Dustin Lampros at Scrappy 135 MMA, and we do look forward to the fighting future as well. I know sometimes this oh, can dominate course. interviews, but people don't know this dude will put his fucking hands on you. He'll break both hands, but he'll fucking put them on you. <laughs> so, Hey, Dustin. No, that's, that's the truth. <laughs> hey, thank you. Travel hey, safe, man. No, seriously, guys. Thank you guys so much for having me. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's still the goal. It's not, let's not get it, you know, misunderstood. I, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm in the UFC in the next couple months. You know, if not, I'll crank another one out. But, um, you know, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to show the world my skills. Uh, I've, you know, like I said, I've devoted my whole life to this. And uh, I'm just patiently waiting, trying to make the right decisions. Hope All right, buddy, happens. stay healthy. Uh, hit me up when you get back down here, and we'll uh, we'll connect down here. Of course. Thanks, John. Thanks, Kenny. I really appreciate you guys' time. Pleasure. There he is, Dustin Lampros, with us here on the Anakin Florian Podcast. It's absolutely insane. And uh, needless to say, I was overwhelmed when I came across his content. We both train at the Institute of Human Performance down here in South Florida, and I saw him down there. So one individual whom I consider now a friend who I had dinner with uh, in April in Miami. He's a good friend of Joe Rogan's. He is big in the podcast space. His name is Patrick Bet David, Valuetainment. PBD. Yeah, tremendous individual. Yeah, PBD. Right. I'm probably underselling him. PB, PD, PB, PBD, you're the fucking man. He's a minority owner of the New York Yankees, right? But so he took his nine-year-old to see Sound of Freedom. And I'm quickly just going to read a synopsis. that's just very quick trailer. Sound of Freedom, if you don't know, based on the incredible true story, shines a light on even the darkest of places. After rescuing a young boy from ruthless child traffickers, a federal agent learns the boy's sister is still captive and decides to embark on a dangerous mission to save her. Time running out, he quits his job and journeys deep into the Colombian jungle, putting his life on the line to free her from a fate worse than death. And so... A lot of people are talking about this right now. And Kenny and I on this show, obviously, we talk about MMA. We talk about sports. We keep it light. We don't wade too far politically. And this is a political issue. Um, but PBD essentially was saying, you know, some children aren't ready to see this, right? But his son, he deemed ready to see this movie. And he said, did anything in the movie scare you? And his son said, you know, just the beginning sequence when, you know, the kids got kidnapped. And he said to his son, you know, that's real. And, and that's what I'm doing is raising awareness. It's important for people to know and kids to know just the reality of all of this. And just amazing that Dustin has taken this initiative upon himself in his spare time, you know, to uh, to tr try to affect change here in South Florida. It's uh, It's just incredible across the board. Absolutely. These are some of the things that uh that call us right you know i, I it, it was very cool to hear him talk about how there is things that are bigger outside of fighting and you know he said he wanted to connect to some of those things you get closer to god and all those things and sometimes these things you know call call us out for a purpose for something bigger than ourselves and to see dustin do that um at a point where it's so critical in his mixed martial arts career um shows that that there's a lot of bigger and better things for him as well. And, and he, it may be within the mixed martial arts realm, but to see him share that, you know, 
part of himself. And to be able to go out there and do that and dedicate a, a bit of himself to that is huge, man. That, that, that's what changes the world. You know, a lot of times we could point and say, ah, there's this going on, this, but what are you doing about it? And Dustin's yeah, going out there right. and doing something about it. So kudos, man. I, I, I love uh, hearing that story. And thank you, John, for, for bringing him on the show, man. That was awesome. Of course. And that's a perfect note on which to end. It's a lot to sort of think about uh, as a parent. And I don't know that my daughters emotionally are ready to see that movie. You know, I think they'd probably come home, lock the doors and uh, never leave again. But uh, it is what it is. All right. We got to bounce on out of here. UFC 291 cannonball coming, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to our guests, Brian Petrie and Dustin Lampros, our fine executive producer, Cody Merrill, helping us out more than you know, uh, behind the scenes. Quick turn for us, actually. We'll be back, I believe, on Monday. Full recap of UFC 291 and a look ahead to the new look UFC fight night in Nashville, Sanhagen versus Font, coming up on August 5th. Fights keep on coming, ladies and gentlemen. All systems go. We'll see you back here in a few days. For Kenny Florian, I'm John Anna. Thanks for watching, listening, subscribing, and liking. We appreciate every last one of you. Talk to you Monday. Until then, you'll later. <laughs>